so let's let's talk about these things just just real quick i just i just want to know what what this is about so I'll, I'll tell you the big thing for case we're back in the day huge in the honda world and so for for case we the region reason why they picked up a couple of the first gens or the older generation hondas was because that's essentially what they believe started um you know tuning essentially you know a lot of these guys were building and customizing these cars so they ended up purchasing a few of them and then hopefully turning into some fun project cars and so once again Honda's been iconic in the tuning world, some of the best OGs in, in the game. And so K-Sport was, once again, Honda's was their first big market. And so what we have is a couple old Honda Civics. Actually, let me let me take that back because I don't know if they're Civics. I can't remember what they're called. So. Well, no, this you know what this is? This is like Key Lime yep. Pie right here. Okay. This is like the Honda Civic Key Lime. So yeah, so th this is, the, this is the Honda uh, Key Lime Pie and then we have the Orange Bang 2.0 no, over there. there. No, the orange, uh, the squirt, the orange squirt. <laughs> we have the orange squirt, we have the Key Lime Pie, and then, so here's the thing is we just love small cars here, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Big Guy Small Cars. We're going to start a website called BigGuySmallCars.com and this is where we basically just hop in and ride in small cars. So that's I, why I, we're collecting. Is it because it makes everything bigger? It's, it's, it's all proportion. You know what they say about guys that drive small cars? They probably couldn't find big ones to buy or something. I, <laughs> yeah. No, but uh, you know, they're super cool. Super old school. I just I just love hanging out with this guy. It's like, it's nonstop. My cheeks will hurt at, by the end of this video because I'm laughing so much. <laughs> um, all right, and then we got uh, Nova. Nova, so the cool thing about this Nova is it has actually the old supercharged uh, LS3 base out of the, that old car. So when we swap motors out of that car, we actually put it in this Nova. So uh, Voodoo 13, K-Sport started getting heavily involved in the domestic market. And so there was a time where we were, and it's still currently getting into like the old school building suspension for these things and suspension arms and things like that. And then we ended up picking this thing up and just putting a 800 to horsepower supercharged uh, LS in it essentially. So this thing is kind of what we take out on the weekends, go to the drag strip with and have a lot of fun. <clears throat> Super sketchy, still has drum brakes on it. What? So, yeah, so it makes a lot of power, but it doesn't stop. stop good. You don't, you hang on. You just hope there's a big runway that you can actually slow down on. But uh, that's, the, that's the cool thing about these old American cars to me is they're like still the last breed of sketchiness, right? It's, it's the purest form of just the excitement of driving something that is totally sketchy. And, you know, obviously it's still under works, but still to throw a on a horsepower or something like this is pretty awesome. Yeah, well, I love Scotto's Napalm Nova. Oh, yeah, dude, there's just something about driving a you know, a brick of metal with 800 horsepower in it that you don't get driving many other cars. And uh, yeah, super fun to drive, but sketch, super fun. Blows the tires off of it. Uh, everyone's gonna hate me if I skip the Beetle. Um, so what's going on with this? Is this uh, also a company car here? Yeah, this just, uh, the thing is we have such a big back lot that every now and then we'll just hop in these things, just go screw off in the back lot. And you guys will probably see that, but we use this lot to test when we do, once again, when I make a change on my personal car or even customer cars, we have a couple acres out back where we just shake them down, do burnouts, do some drifting, but essentially put the products to the test and just see what suspension changes we made and how it affects the car. So it's fun just to get a couple guys out there and just go bang around, set up an autocross course and take out the old Hondas and Beetles and just go, you know, haul some ass. I like that. Maybe later you're going to take us around in your drift car. Oh, you haven't done that before. No, no. The only thing we've done together is the Miata race. Oh, the uh, double dragon, double, yeah, yeah. The ru team rush hour. Yeah, yeah, team rush hour. You were the steering wheel, right? Right. I was the gas and, and brake. And then we switched. And then we switched, yeah. okay. which we lost terribly yeah. bad, so we gotta well, work on that. Well, that, it was fun because um, when we were driving that uh, and I was doing the gas and brake and you were doing the steering, I was thinking like, why isn't this guy slowing down? <laughs> And then I remembered, oh, I'm doing the gas and the brake. <laughs> I remember God. watching, I remember watching the clock the entire time, like, Larry, we gotta go faster. <laughs> Larry, we gotta go faster. Dude, they had a massive clock that basically start and stop at a certain point, transponder. Yeah. And I'm watching the clock tick, Larry. <laughs> right. We end up losing anyways. Here we go. <laughs> So let's let's talk about these two uh, red buddies here. We got the NSX. This thing um, looks pretty clean. Yeah. So this NSX, once again, development car for K-Sport that the crew fell in love with. Um, pretty much completely stock. 
and only has about 10,000 miles on it. And so uh, Nick, the owner, has absolutely just kind of let this thing sit because Acura, this particular car is has so much heritage behind it. I keep saying that, but this car is, you know, one of the, my favorite videos is Aaron Nacena, you know, driving this thing around. Um, oh, in the loafers. Yes, in the yeah. loafers. I love that. And uh, to me, it's like, there it is. My favorite part is when he gets like, close to the Japanese journalists, <laughs> they all get scared. <gasps> They're like, <laughs> yeah, 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 it's so good. But it's a, a piece of, you know, motorsports history, oh, essentially. This, wow, this thing is really clean. Can I, can I open yeah. it? Oh my god, it looks like all a brand original. new car. Yeah, all I can't believe it, it's so nice. Huh. So I'm gonna have like that flex moment right now, but Acura actually let me, Acura. Whoa! <laughs> they, they, they let me drive their museum car out on the street and that was a lot of fun. There's Lewis. He's following us in a 1991 Acura NSX, all stock, basically a brand new car because guess what? It's out of the Honda Museum. Dude, it's uh, driving these cars, even old or new, especially the, NS, the new NSX. So I actually drove a new NSX at a racetrack. I can't remember. I went to Speed Vegas is where I went and had a chance to drive the new NSX. And uh, I don't, there's just something to say about that, the name NSX that gives you the feeling of motorsports. Plus the sound is so good. Yeah. I love the sound. It's, uh, it's and I love the play on this. Yeah. The base for it. That is so cool. All right, so went from Hondas to things like this than a sticker. I love this car so much. So this is your personal car. Yeah. I love this so much. I, I actually, I remember, I think I have photos of you just standing in inside of it. Yep. Just standing and then the last just, time you were out here. Yeah. So this, this is so cool. So tell us, let's just do the quick one minute build right. breakdown on this thing. So I, I fell in love with convertibles about three years ago, especially the E30. I've been a fan of cars in the late 80s, uh, the very boxy style. And I uh, was talking to Kay Mira about it and I envisioned, I said, I want a mini Rari. I call this my mini Ferrari. And I, it's actually called the Magnum. It's based off the old Magnum and it's, it has the F40 wheel replica wheels on it. But for me, um, I worked on this kit with Kay Mira, told him I want to build something like this. He came up with this crazy idea and it ended up coming to life. And uh, to me, it's just something about having an old school 80s cruiser, mustache, blue blockers, cruising around. And uh, this is how this car was born, was just purely out of having a passion for boxy cars. I just love the way it looks so much. I love your plate, with, by the Hermager. way. I mean, Hermager. And just the 1552 wheels. 15 um, inches, how'd it go small? Wow, 15, so what is it? 15 by? Uh, 11. 15 by 11 in the back. Yep, it's I think negative 62 in the rear offset. Wow, and what about the front? The fronts are nine and a half, and they're like negative uh, 30. It just looks so cool. You have that whole Bosuzuku style with the uh, uh, oil cooler coming out of the headlight. Yeah. Do, it, I, 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 do people look at you like you're stupid when they, when they see this? Oh, dude, this is what I, it's ultimately the Pierce's worst nightmare. Like I showed up, I put this thing at Beamer Fest in 2000, I think 17 in the Magnaflow booth. And I had people either absolutely hate it, and then I had the other people like absolutely love it. And for me, it was uh, once again putting a Pandem on an old Euro, JDM, Euro come together, and that's why I had a, the Bozuzoku taste with a little bit of the Euro class. And so that's why I kind of did the styling the way we did on it. Super simple, round headlights. Does this actually work? Yeah. Oh, cool. So, yeah. it's, so it's a simple, yep, yeah, remote uh, oil filter, and just ran the lines right into the remote oil filter, and. It doesn't, it, it, it's like a, it's like Mario Kart because it's essentially like an oil slick when you ran, <laughs> run into somebody, <laughs> it, you just sprays oil all over the place and the people behind you, they just get I ha, destroyed. I, ha, I have no airbag, so that's my only impact cushion that I have is the oil cooler, so. No, I think that's safe. Yeah, that that's good. I like that. Um, so let's go to kind of the centerpiece, your amazing boss. Yeah. The boss drift oh. car. Let's check that out. Yeah, let's, yeah. let's do a walk around on that. Yeah. All right, so Corey, tell us a little bit about this building. This building is so insane. It's This building is haunted, essentially, right? I didn't tell you this earlier, but it is the most haunted building in Mesa, Arizona. And uh, so this building's been around for years. I think it was, you know, late 1930s, this building was built. And it used to be the old Sunkiss Soda Company. Uh, back in the day and uh, 
So he had all the space. It was, it was once again, making orange sun kissed soda. It's actually an orange grove out back. And so this building sat vacant for so long and the guys at K-Sport saw this place as, once again, not only a historical monument, but could be such a cool place to bring the automotive community into such a unique environment. And uh, so it is considered the most haunted place, but now it's being renovated into this cool automotive hotspot. Why? Are you allowed to say why it's haunted? Why it's haunted? Uh, there's been some accidents that have happened here back in the early days where probably OSHA wasn't so sensitive with things and people getting hurt and probably getting cut in half and some orange squashes and things like that. And uh, I mean, you're, it's, it's like ears and fingers and things in orange soda. Is that kind of kind of Well, you will, even like, so here's old buildings, right? It's like we have an elevator over there that's probably super sketchy. Uh, staircases that are completely dark, they can easily fall. It's like back then, the. <laughs> you're walking around like on, on ice because there's wasn't built for safety. It was built for, you know, making I mean, soda. No, yeah, it was, right. it was for making the best arm soda right? <laughs> in That's the a, world. Yeah. And, uh, and so, yeah, so it was, uh, there was accidents that happened here. And uh, I guess they, they all still live on somewhere in this building. That's so freaky. Dude, That's they're so still... crazy. But with that said, this building is so pretty and so nice. And, oh, I see the ghosts right now. Look, they're like moving. moving. Yeah, they're moving right now. Don't, don't, <laughs> they're, moving. Don't, 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 don't. <laughs> they're moving the curtains. Um, but uh, comment below if you guys want to attend a photo workshop here. Yeah. Because this, the backdrop, everything is just so cool. Like, look, this looks like a wedding venue with those, uh, with, with those speakers yeah. set up. Dude. Are we, I mean. So the, it, it, we're getting to a point, and we've actually have had a lot of people like manufacturers come reach out to us to use this as a photo spot just because of like the historic look to it. And it's all the original brick from the, the early 1900s. And uh, if you want to, you, Larry, you can do whatever you want here. I'm just telling you that right now. So guys, comment section, yeah, you guys do whatever you, what do you want to do here? If you guys want to shoot cars here, if you guys want to do like a super exclusive car show slash workshop here in Arizona, at, in Mesa, Comment below, I'll arrange it. I think that'll be a lot of fun. Plus, guess what? We'll sh probably shoot like 10 autofocus episodes here. How about that? I'm doing round of applause right now. Yeah. I'm doing the clap emoji so in the clap. comment section. So clap. All right, so now let's talk about your Boss S14. I love this car so much. It's so pretty and it's just, I don't know, it's just unique. There, time and time again, people have done S14. All day, every day like the first formula drift event you know it, yeah. it, it's it's like the drift car from the factory but you've taken it to kind of like just that next step um it's and it's also evolved so much since you built it yeah and there's there's a big story behind this kit and what the you know the boss rocket bunny is and especially with k mira he's you know to me he's w one of the most creative dudes i've probably ever met and when I was, I met him at SEMA in 2000, I wanna say 13 or 14, when the FRS kit was literally everywhere. I think that's where the Over Nationals kind of started, Over Fender Nationals started, was with the Rocket Bunny FRS. And uh, it's a funny story how I met him. Uh, I was at, I think, a Tao nightclub, and me and Dustin were wearing long wigs and like old shitty business suits, and we were dancing at Tao, and, and K. Mira came walking up to me with his translator. And they're like, oh, he wants to take a picture, he wants to take a picture. In my head, I knew who K. Mira was, but I'm like, how does he know who I am? I don't think he knows who I am. And uh, I pose and I take a picture and we look like, me and Dustin look like a bunch of drug lords with our fake wigs on. And his, his translator goes, uh, are you guys in the mafia? And we're like, no, no, no. But that moment of hanging out at an after party at SEMA with K. Mira is what created this relationship to create this. And I ended up becoming friends with them at that point and I told them I wanted to build a 350Z originally because we had that car at the time, the K-Sport 350Z. And he goes, I think we should do something different. We should do a 240SX, an S14. So uh, I think it was around 2015 where we started talking quite a bit and coming up with some ideas. And to him, it was to pay you know, respect to the old Datsun brand. And the idea with the round headlights, the very boxy fascia on the front, was once again to pay tribute to the old Datsun race cars. And so 
we went back and forth and he was showing me renderings and what the car looked like and I absolutely fell in love with it. And I remember posting the first rendering of the car and everybody was saying, it looks like a Dodge Challenger, it looks like a Charger, it looks like an American Muscle, why would you do that? But a lot of people didn't realize it was actually based off the old Datsuns. Okay, so if you guys watch Hunican Auto Focus, you guys know that I'm a big fan of Mirasan. Um, he's definitely very inspirational to a lot of people yeah. in the industry. He's basically inspired, I guess, the over Fender Nationals and this whole bolt-on look. But what people don't realize is that's actually, that, that was actually an OEM thing. It yeah. actually came from cars like the Hokoska GTR yep. and the 432, um, you know, 240Z, yep. the Datsun 240Z, yep. that's the four, for uh, it's the four cam, three carburetor, two valve, right? Oh no no no! Is it four four valve? Four valve, three carburetors. It's a lot of numbers. Two lot cams. Of yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the four three two. It, like a lot of that is from that. And so back to Mirasan. You know, I've had a chance to visit him at TRA Kyoto shoot him at his place, check out his place, check out how he actually designs these things. So what people don't realize is that he's actually a computer genius. He's, he's a car guy first, yeah. but he's a computer genius. So TRA means top resin art. It's like the most JDM thing. And he actually showed me some of the first ever resin body parts that he's made for cars, including the original Sylvia, if Dude. you could believe it or not. I, I do believe it because the man is a wizard. And I, I remember talking with him and asking what rocket bunny means. And he told me that there was always this uh, rumor that there's bunnies that live on the moon. And so the rocket bunny is the rocket that launched the bunnies to the moon. So rocket bunny was essentially what created that rumor. So rocket bunny was actually based off of that. And uh, that's the most JDM thing yeah, ever. I it, love it so it, much. It, dude, he is, once again, if you guys haven't spent time with him, he's the most creative human being I've ever met. And I, I, I owe so much to the man because he's helped me so much to bring something like this to life, but also just to learn from him in so many different ways. He's a big fan of, you know, American muscle and simple liveries that he loves automotive culture. And for me uh, to have this car come to life is uh, something that I never thought would possibly happen, especially with somebody like him. Um, but when the car was released, and this was, this is still kit one of one. This was the first kit that came out of the first uh, Boss print. And uh, I've changed it quite a bit. And once again, as I received the kit in early 2015, which was in the Autometer booth. And so the cool thing about this is this car was in the Autometer booth at SEMA and it was the first Japanese car or import car that was ever in an Autometer booth in the history of SEMA. They always had American muscle, so this was the first JDM car that they ever had. And then it looks like a Dodge Challenger. <laughs> Larry! <laughs> <laughs> Just, yeah. I, I, you guys know I'm a Datsun guy, so yeah. I, I get it. I think it's really cool. I absolutely love it. So let's do kind of a quick walk around on it. So yeah. what are the pieces that's actually changed for the kit? Okay, so the, the front fender is actually one entire piece. You know, you look at a traditional over fender, what you do is you cut the factory fender and then just bolt the over fender onto the factory. Well, this is just one giant piece of fiberglass. So the front fender is one piece. The bumper is another separate piece that molds right on onto the front bumper. And since you change the front fascia, you have the grill insert that is different. The kit comes with two other round headlights. I went with uh, actually upgraded to a rigid headlight, uh, more so than the factory light. Um, but the kit comes with both fenders, which is one piece, which saves so much time, right? Can you can imagine what it takes to cut a factory fender, size it, mock it. This is literally, you remove the old fender, put it right on. And so it bolts onto the factory point. The other thing too, is I'm running a factory core support on this. And so the thing is just purely simplicity that you don't have to do a crazy tube front end. If you have a clean S14 and you want this kit, it will bolt right on factory. Um, and so he always designs his kits that way, just for simplicity and bolt on with factory components or factory location. Wow. All right, let's check out the back. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on over here. Yeah, so I, I changed the back a little bit and like, for me, dri drifting is, to me, drifting to me is, is more than just a sport. Once again, it's, a, it's, a, it's basically a blank canvas to show your art through driving and through the car. 
And there's so many different walks of life. You know, there's the grassroots guys, there's the pro guys and everything in between. And I just so happened to fall in love with Formula Drift and scary drift cars, right? And so I built this car to be more like a Formula Drift spec because for me, driving at Road Atlanta, uh, driving uh, at Texas Motor Speedway, driving at these tracks that are incredibly fast, I get a rush at having a Formula Drift spec car because I like those high speeds. And, it, and outside of that, it's like you look at Grid Life and these other party events that are coming up, you know, you're driving with dudes like Chris Forsberg, Von Kitten Jr., Ryan Turk, um, these Formula Drift stars. And for me, it's like, since I'm not in the series, I still have an opportunity to drive with them and still push myself to see where I'm at on the ranks with some of the best drivers in the world. And uh, like I said, I like scaring myself. I love horsepower. I love going fast. So what I had to do to make this car almost formula drift spec is I did um, 2F fiberglass over fender. So I, I back half the car and I did the 2F LFC. So I have like a crush zone. And then what I did is we modified it. So the rocket bunny over fenders go right on top. So the over fender nationals, I have one over fender and another over fender. But what it does is it creates, you know, once again, a simple crumple zone. So if I do run a wall, I'm not worried about ripping the whole back half off the car. I can literally pull this off with a couple fasteners, throw a new one on and go. So simplicity. That definitely makes it thicker than a Snicker. It makes it thicker than a that. Snicker. Yeah. Uh, Very cool. You got some a little bit of a little perfect wall damage oh right there. Yeah. yeah. Just a little, little nice little tap a tap right there. Yeah, it's uh, dude. I, as you know, Larry, building a car, you come emotionally connected to it, and it's more so rather than dropping it off a shop and seeing it in two weeks. It's like you put so much energy, time. Uh, resources of your friends you know I created so many good relationships with you know a car like this that it's like it's more than just a car this thing is a story to me once again working with Camira taking to my friend shop to the cage fab meeting so many people and companies that uh, that see the same vision that you do and so this car to me is more than a car it's something that I can definitely thrash and have fun with but it's like this car did more than just get me on track all right so this is gonna be a, a, a stupid question that I don't so I, I I don't know that much okay. about building drift cars, yep. um, but is there a reason why you have the hugest brakes front and rear? Is it because this is a party car and this is not a competition car? So you can lap after lap and lap after lap and it won't overheat the brakes? Yes. So there's two things. Yeah. So like for me is I can literally change a few things and turn this into a time attack car or I can tune it down and, and make it a drift car, but I went with bigger brakes just so I had the flexibility to do both. A lot of people are running like small diameter disc, you know, two to four piston brakes. And uh, for drifting, you're not necessarily always using the brakes, but for me, I'm like, I wanted to take something, if I want to go hot lap, I can just go hot lap all day long or I can just put it in drift mode and go. And it's, once again, rotating mass kind of works against you, but it's honestly, these brakes, even though they look massive, are fairly light. The other thing too is with this brake here, you notice there's no dual caliper setup. It's just one caliper. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's another thing that people don't notice. A lot of people are running two separate calipers. This is one. So R1 Concepts has basically two brakes in one caliper. So there's two sections of this. You have the bottom half or the bottom pots, which oh, works no as the way. foot brakes, and the top pots work as a handbrake. You're kidding. No, so there's two lines going into that brake, one from the handbrake and one from the pedals. Oh, that's so cool. I, I wouldn't have even noticed that, but you pointed out. So there's two lines. Oh, that's so cool. So it simplifies things. So yeah. it's now it's a convenience thing. It simplifies, it looks factory, but then I can go, once again, if I want to go do a time attack and I can easily can knowing that the brakes would last. So, so uh, I asked that because I remember being at um, Grid Life in Atlanta. Yeah. And, you know, that track is huge and it's so brake intensive. So I was riding with Frederick Osbo in his demo car uh -huh. and it's like, He's doing, um, oh no, no, it was actually his comp car. They actually brought yep. it out, the, the hatchback at the time. And he's like, after two laps, basically, there's no brakes at all. Yeah. None at all. Like he's oh. just tapping it and he's basically having to slow down either with his e-brake <laughs> or with just downshifting. And it's because it's a Formula Drift car and it's not meant to do lap after lap after right. lap after lap in terms of full laps. Yeah, and so that's kind of like why I took this thing out of um, making it more of a fun car. It still has the same components to be a, a drift car, uh, you know, a Formula Drift spec car. But to me, once again, I just wanted to be able to take it and put it anywhere and not have those issues. And, and that just shows where the level of competition is going in, in professional drifting is that we're looking for the most 
weight savings we possibly can. So let's run the smallest rotor, thinnest rotor, the smallest brakes. Let's get this thing as light as possible. And, and so you're sacrificing that, right? You're sacrificing um, the risk of overheating the brakes only doing two laps when once again, I can probably do 100. So there's a compromise I make to make this thing just an overall fun party car to do what. Dude, when we're at Grid Life, I literally asked, I asked some of the guys if I can go out there and just shake the car down. And I was literally running with time attack in this thing and then pull into the pits and then wait a session and go back and drifting. But that's what I wanted. I just wanted to be able to do anything I wanted with it. So you'll notice a few things that I changed, like once again, the bigger brakes. I did a, a little bit more cooling for the thing because I, I hot lapped the, sh the heck out of it. Let's check out the motor. Yes. This is kind of the centerpiece of this car. It, and it lo it's, so for me, Larry, it's like, a lot of this is off the shelf stuff, you know what I mean? And for, I, I'm not the best mechanic in the world, so I wanted something that I can easily change, easily replace, get off the shelf. I didn't want to fab anything. And there was a few parts obviously that had to be fab to, to get it, but it's, once again, it's very limited. So a lot of the stuff in here is off the parts. So uh, this, did this ever have a V8 in it? It had two different V8s in it. Oh. It had two different V8s in it. It had a big 80 mil single turbo, LS7, and the problem that I ran into is that I just didn't like the orientation and the position of the turbo originally because it was a big 80 mil right off the front of the, of the LS. And so we went to a twin turbo cell, setup, an LS7 twin turbo, and we had significant heating problems um, with that. And we tried everything we can to calm it down. We turned the boost down, but also just the simplicity of changing spark plugs changing plug wires and accessing things, is that with the big turbo V8 in here, we ran into more of those problems. When, it, when you had a five minute timeout, it was very difficult to work on things. With the Jay-Z, you have the intake ignition exhaust. I can work on any part from over here to there in a five minute without burning in my hands off. A twin turbo V8, you're working with the runners and the headers and the turbos and everything being so tight, it's difficult. So simplicity, ease to work on in a time crunch. And they're way more fun to drive. Yeah, this thing is so cool. And of course, you have the Wise Fab on here to get some more angle. Yep. Full Wise Fab, motor's fully built. Uh, top end is Kelford cam, springs, uh, retainers, port and polished head. And then we did Wise Scope pistons and rods. Uh, GTX 3584 Gen 2 turbo. Um, tile waste gates and blow valves. And then if you look over here, Larry, you might see it. On the wastegate, you'll actually see a little hot dog on it, which is one of my favorite pieces that nobody ever sees. Oh, what the? Oh, that's so cool. It says the boss. <laughs> hot dog. That's awesome. And uh, so there's uh, a lot of little things that, that make this car fun to me and these partners that want to come on board. But yeah, right now, if I was just running off the turbo, it would make about 702 horsepower. And then we added a Nitrous Express NOS kit which is a hundred shot, which will take it almost right up to about 800 horsepower. God. That's good. That's really good for Dude. a demo car, honestly. <laughs> well, it, like it I said, so I want to cool. have a chance when I go to Road Atlanta to come down the hill as sketchy and as fast as possible. And uh, I also want to be able to still run with all my friends that have their pro cars out there. Or maybe if I want to have a chance to go back to FD one day to have a chance to go back and have fun and, and on a professional level. I think it's uh, time to shred now. What do you think? Oh, do you want to? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I only think of the best water, Lair. Is it thirsty? He's thirsty. Let's see. How's my aim? There we go. <laughs> How's that, Lair? That's good. Is that good? Yeah, that's good. That's good. We're creating a burnout box.
So this is for all of the people that watch you on live stream day in and day out. Oh yeah. They don't get to see you shred that much, you know? No. It's uh it's a nice change of pace to finally hop in and do just even a little bit of driving. Like I should come out here more often, but uh things have been crazy. Now we have an excuse to come out and party. Well, here's the thing. Uh it, it's one of those things where it's like this is what it's all for. Yeah. This is what it's for. Like, all of the stuff we do is so we could do stupid things with cars. Well, and that's the other thing, too, is I think this car exists to have fun in and give everybody experience. And I, I do my best to not turn down ride-alongs, but I think, for me, drifting is also giving people the experience of, you know, motorsports and drifting as a whole. And I got a baby. <laughs> yeah, I got a baby. <laughs> oh, my God. Definitely thicker than a snicker over here. Very thick. you here because I actually have a gift for you okay oh God. so all right oh. Oh, <laughs> what, no. what do you think this is uh, let me smell it first <laughs> <laughs> all right open it up is open that up. a summer sausage it. yeah yeah it is it is it's that long too oh my God. <laughs> hold on Larry. Oh. No, you didn't. Hold on. Yes, I did. Hopefully, it's a picture of you jumping in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sick. Look at you leading all the tandems. Larry. Sick. So sick. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Where should I put it? Yeah, up put it on top where, of the car. Where should I put it? Up here? Yeah, yeah. Oh, hold yeah. on, I got so much space. <laughs> put it over here. Just find some wall space. Oh I know it's going to be hard for you and your shop, but you can maybe find a little bit of wall space. Larry, you. Or just hang it up at home. <laughs> Sick. Aww. Aww. Larry, this Aww. is incredible, dude. We were just talking about this the other day of like breaking down what this photo is. Yeah. And everything about this is just 
it's like the culmination of like all the hard work. You it's know. all this shit that's been laying on the ground, like <laughs> turn into a car, and then you get to do this one time with your friends, and that's what. Yeah, and then maybe this moment happened and uh, lasted for half a second. <laughs> I didn't even know what happened yeah. until, until you came back and. <laughs> oh, okay, we got one. Yeah. Oh my God, Larry. That's awesome. Man, but you have no idea. I'm I, glad you like it. I love it, man. Yeah. Jesus. I can't do this on camera, Larry. <laughs> I can't. Do you need a moment? I might need a moment. I'm going to just take a second and take some. <laughs> like I'm giving birth. I just need to. <laughs> <laughs>